Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson with Fairwinds Energy Education. Today, I'd like to talk to you about all of the nuclear power plant protection systems that are supposedly exist to keep radiation from escaping during a nuclear plant emergency. Recent scientific studies from Japan show that 75% of the radiation created by the Fukushima meltdowns was released more than five days after the catastrophe, while only 25% of the radiation was released during the first four days. This data, which is posted on the Fairwinds.org website, shows that the total gaseous releases and liquid releases from Fukushima Daiichi meltdown exceeded the radiation released during and after the Chernobyl meltdown, while Fukushima Daiichi's radiation continues to bleed into the Pacific Ocean. How then can so much radiation possibly penetrate all the radiation barriers engineers designed for nuclear power's safe operation? When I received my bachelor's and my master's degree in nuclear engineering, nuclear engineers were taught that there are at least six barriers to protect us from the massive radiation releases during and following a nuclear emergency. Let's look at these radiation release barriers. The first barrier designed by the nuclear industry is supposed to be the fuel pellet itself. It's ceramic and it's designed to hold the radiation inside. The second radiation barrier is supposed to be the zirconium alloy fuel cladding. Its trademark is called zircaloy. That's designed to contain what's anticipated to be a small amount of radiation that would escape from the destroyed fuel pellet during a nuclear power disaster. The six to eight inch thick steel nuclear reactor vessel itself is supposed to be the third radiation containment system. And that creates a barrier against the disaster driven radiation releases along with all the pipes that are also made of steel. The emergency core cooling systems were designed to serve as the fourth safety barrier by pumping water into the reactor to cool the nuclear reactor core. Barrier number five is the thick wall of steel and concrete that's called a nuclear containment. That's supposed to prevent all the radiation from escaping if all the other radiation barriers failed. It's the final barrier. The containment itself is passive. It just surrounds all the radioactive material. Finally, in case everything does fail, people living or working within 10 mile radius of the nuclear plant are supposed to be able to depend on its emergency plan and evacuation procedures. All six barriers were in place and functioning at Fukushima Daiichi when the tsunami hit, but that caused two major problems that engineers never expected. First, when the tsunami destroyed the emergency core cooling system backup diesel generators, the cooling pumps had no electricity to operate and to cool the nuclear fuel. Second, the tsunami destroyed the pumps along the ocean that were designed to push cool ocean water to cool the nuclear fuel. So instead of these six barriers functioning like the engineers had planned, they fell like dominoes, each failure causing another one as the links in the chain were broken. Here's what really happened. The tsunami destroyed the fourth barrier of the emergency core cooling system. That caused the fuel to overheat and it destroyed the first barrier. The high temperature of the uncooled fuel caused the second barrier of the zirconium cladding to overheat and to catch fire. When the fuel cladding caught fire, the fuel melted through the nuclear reactor, destroying the third barrier too. Now, only the containment barrier, our fifth and final domino, remains. It should have held, right? Unfortunately, no. I first spoke to the NRC's Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards in 2010, a year before Fukushima, 
to share my evidence-based calculations showing that containments would likely leak significant amounts of radioactivity during a nuclear power failure. The response from the ACRS was that the nuclear industry and the NRC simply assume that containments will never leak during nuclear emergencies. Inside Fukushima Daiichi's containment, the pressure increased to more than 100 pounds per square inch, causing a detonation shockwave and a containment failure. Unfortunately, those three explosions at Fukushima Daiichi prove that containment systems really do fail, and thousands of people were injured by exposure to significant amounts of radiation. How do we know the containments failed? First, you can see the violent explosion and the detonation shockwave on TV and on video. The second picture, though, shows that there are two distinct steam plumes exiting Unit 3. One plume emanates from the spent fuel pool, but the other is directly over the reactor vessel, where the top of the containment was supposed to shield everyone and everything from these huge radiation releases. Third, TEPCO itself has admitted that hot gases raging at 250 degrees were released from the containment structure. These pictures definitely show a release of hot radioactive gas. And no, it's not steam, because steam only exists at 212 degrees under normal atmospheric pressure. As soon as the radiation was released from the plant, the evacuations were useless because the plumes were moving wherever the wind and the changing weather patterns took them. Not wanting to frighten people, the Japanese government employees were not allowed to notify people in time for them to evacuate safely. All six barriers at Fukushima failed. The failed core cooling system caused the fuel to overheat, caused the zirconium clad to catch fire, that in turn caused the reactor to breach, and then the containment system failed. There was no place to run. The Japanese government wants to restart more than half of its 50 remaining nuclear reactors. Back in the 60s, the NRC made the decision not to require stronger containments, and the Japanese followed the American lead. You can find a 700-page report about the NRC decision to weaken nuclear containments on our website. The triple meltdowns at Fukushima Daiichi has proven nuclear safety is a myth. Yet the nuclear industry continues to put profits before people, with the Japanese government attempting to restart its old reactors with the same 50-year-old containment systems. The NRC, too, has neglected regulations to force major modifications on the 23 containment structures identical to those that were destroyed at Fukushima Daiichi. Worldwide, only Germany has taken these disasters and subsequent loss of life seriously. The Germans have moved ahead with energy efficiency and alternate energy production as methods of protecting their citizens' lives against the risks inherent in nuclear power production. For me, the lyrics of the old Peter, Paul, and Mary song, Where Have All the Flowers Gone, come to mind. And I wonder when we will ever learn. I'm Arnie Gunderson. We'll keep you in touch. Where have all the flowers gone? Long time ago.